Want to migrate your object storage from AWS S3 to Cloudflare R2 without changing a single line of code? You're in the right place. Welcome back to the R2 101 series where I show you everything you need to know to get the most out of Cloudflare R2. Today, we are diving into how the R2 S3 API compatibility makes your migration from S3 seamless so you can focus on building. R2 is designed to be fully compatible with the S3 API, allowing users to seamlessly migrate their existing application and data without the need for significant changes to their code base or workflows. With R2, you can use the same API calls and tools that you're already familiar with, making it a frictionless experience to move to Cloudflare storage solution. While R2 aims for full compatibility with the S3 API, there are a few differences to keep in mind. Certain API operations like get object tagging, put object tagging, and delete object tagging are not currently supported in R2. However, R2 also extends the standard S3 API with additional features. For example, R2 natively supports Unicode in keys and values for the custom metadata field without requiring any extra encoding or decoding. For a complete list of supported and unsupported API operations at both the object and the bucket levels, I recommend checking out the documentation for the latest details. Now let's walk through an example of how to configure the AWS SDK JavaScript library for use with Cloudflare R2. Now, before I do this, I need to generate an access key in my dashboard. So let's head over to the R2 dashboard. And over here, you'd see manage R2 API tokens. I already created the token that I would like to use for my project, but to create one, you just need to create a new API token, assign it a name, and also specify the permissions that you'd like to assign. For mine, I am using the object read and write, which allows the ability to read, write, and list objects in specific buckets. And once you are specified your bucket, if you want it to be for all buckets within your account or for specific buckets, you can also select that and then create your API token. This will give you an access key and also secret key that you can then enter into your environment variables, which I already have mine set up. And also to find your account ID, you can go over to the R2 page and then your account ID is visible for you to copy. So go ahead and copy all these credentials into your .m file within your the code base and then in the index.js file you see right here on screen, I am using the AWS SDK client library to you know, set up my buckets and connect to R2. Where the setup process is being initiated is right here where I have created a new S3 client and then I'm assigning a region and endpoints and also credentials. So for my case, I I'm um, calling the endpoint, which in this case would be the account id.r2.cloudflarestorage.com. And I'm also passing in the access key ID and the secret key that I've copied from my R2 dashboard. Now, if you already have an existing project that uses the AWS SDK library, all you need to do is just change the few lines that I currently have here, which is the access key ID and the secret key. and your project is automatically usable in R2. But if that's not the case and you're trying to like use the AWS SDK library that you're already familiar with for a new project with Cloudflare R2, then you need to go ahead and set up this project as it is. Right now, I've installed a few libraries. I've installed the AWS SDK library, and I've also set up the environment variables that are necessary. Now, I am going to do two different operations just to show you what you can do with this S3 API. So right now, I am first uploading a file directly to my bucket. So I already have an existing bucket called podcast as we've been using in the previous episodes. So I want to add a new podcast episode to my bucket. 
Now, what, I, what I'm doing here is essentially using the put object command from the S3 API to upload this object. So I have my episode three already here within my file directory and I'm also specifying the bucket's name the specific key that I would like to upload and then the content type. And then I'm using the put object command to upload the file directly to R2. You can also list all the objects you have within your bucket using the list objects v2 command, which currently what I'm doing here is I'm logging all the objects that I have within my bucket, the specific bucket that I'm using for this example, which is podcast. And finally, you can also do something like deleting the specific object within your bucket using the delete object command, which I have specified here that I would like to delete the specific episode, episode one. Now, if I go ahead and run this, so if I do npm start, what happens is the following things that I've you know specified within the code, which is first to upload the file to the bucket and second to list all the available files that I have within my bucket, which you currently see here, and then finally to delete episode one. So you see all the operations have successfully been completed. And if I go to my R2 dashboard in the podcast bucket, you'd see exactly what happened, which is I added an extra episode here and then I deleted episode one. You can also generate pre-signed URLs to provide temporarily public read or write access to a bucket. These links are useful for securely sharing specific objects or allowing others to upload files without exposing your credentials or opening up broader access. Here's how to do that. So on line 60 here, I'm assigning a you know, pre-signed URL and for me to be able to do that, I installed a new library called the AWS SDK S3 Request Presigner. And now I'm calling that on line 60. Basically, I'm specifying that I would like, you know, to create a URL that anyone can access for episode two. And once I run that, I have this pre-signed URL that I can then preview. Anyone can actually preview directly on the browser. If you're looking for examples of how to use R2 with your preferred AWS SDK, I'll recommend that you check out the examples in the documentation for guidance tailored to your setup. We have examples for the AWS SDK, for the JavaScript library, the Java library, and so much more. Cloudflare R2 S3 API gives you a seamless way to store, retrieve, and manage your data in the cloud with the flexibility to migrate effortlessly from AWS S3 or any S3 compatible service. Now you're ready to migrate your application to R2 and enjoy seamless scalable storage. In the next video, I'll show you how to quickly migrate or copy objects from other cloud providers to R2. Thank you so much for watching this video and happy building.